This is the Realty Classroom Podcast, episode number 12. Welcome to the show that focuses on helping real estate agents build a bulletproof business plan so that they can sell more properties in less time and live a more fulfilled life. Are you a real estate agent with an entrepreneurial spirit who wants to turn your job into a business without sacrificing your lifestyle, but you just can't seem to find the right plan to help you get there? Well, then you're definitely in the right place. I'm Danny Griffin, the founder of The Realty Classroom and the host of this podcast. And to help you take immediate action to build a better real estate agent business, I've created a free jumpstart course for you at freeagentgift.com. Let's get started in this episode. Today, I want to talk about the assembly line. Yes, the assembly line. I know, what's that have to do with the real estate agent business? Well, much more than you would think. Harken back to a couple episodes ago when I introduced the mentors and the people that I like to learn from and then pass on what I've learned to you. And I'm going to start with first, Napoleon Hill. I've been a big fan of the body of work that Napoleon Hill did. A lot of you might know his book, Think and Grow Rich. But if you dive in just a little bit deeper, you're going to find this massive volume of work where he wrote The Law of Success. A lot of the modern day gurus that teach success or motivation, they learned so much from this work because really, here's what happens. Hill, really around the turn of the century, moving into the Roaring Twenties, is a reporter and he's a writer. So he gets a chance to get with Andrew Carnegie and study him as one of these many people that he was after trying to interview at that time in the Industrial Revolution. Well, Carnegie throws down a pretty good challenge. He says, look, if you'll spend the next 20 years of your life, imagine this, somebody sitting down with you and it's Carnegie at the time. I will get you access to all of some of the most successful people in this country and in the world for that matter. And you can study them, but you have to commit to that and you have to make a quick decision. Well, of course, the history is he says yes. But as you go through the law of success and you learn all of these laws, 17 laws that he came up with, you find that there were few people that had big influence on him. And other than Carnegie getting started, it's actually Henry Ford that probably, in my estimation, has the biggest effect on Hill's work. So when you go in there and you start to think about that, hmm, that's curious. I got very interested in that. Why would Ford be so interesting? Why would he have learned the most from him? And all of a sudden it hits me. When you think about Ford, oftentimes if you haven't done the study, you think cars, the Model T, and you think about all of the black cars that you know Henry has. But it turns out that when you do the study, there were a lot of people at that time making cars. So the manufacture of an automobile in and of itself wasn't anything unique at all. There was just a ton of people trying to do it, in fact, well before everything started to consolidate. But what is most interesting about Ford is simply put, the assembly line and the modernization of the assembly line. And that hit me. I started to think about all these guys, whether they're alive or passed on as mentors and saying to myself, gee, that's that's interesting. Why don't I hire Henry Ford? Of course, at this point, it has to be imaginary, but I know enough about him and I want to bring him into my real estate agent business. And I want to say, Henry, look, I need some consultation, consultation here to see how these processes work. And there's the key word, right? You lean in right there. It's about the systems, the processes that take place that run this business. How does this systematically work? And it was interesting. I started to think back when I was a kid. My family was in the liquor business and in the big volume liquor business in the city of Boston. And there was this big warehouse, it was called Warehouse Liquors. And there was this big, huge 10,000 foot box of a store. And there was an upstairs where uh, all these cases and cases and cases of booze was kept, right? My job was to go up there and move the stuff around, get it on the conveyor belt and out it would go. But up there also was an office. And the office was situated in the corner of the warehouse upstairs with all glass windows where you could look down upon what was happening. And it hit me. I imagined Henry 
walking up into an office, you see a lot of these old movies where somebody's on a manufacturing plant and there's the manager's office is upstairs. You walk up a flight of stairs, it's all glass. You can see down what's happening. So I imagine taking Henry up to my proverbial glass office, looking down on my real estate agent business, like a manufacturing plant. And he would look down there and he said, well, how does this all happen? Where does the marketing happen? Where does the, the manufacturing of whatever it is you're building happen? And what happens from there? How do you deliver it to, you know, to a happy uh, outcome? So you look at that and you say, well, that's pretty interesting. And you think, well, Henry, first of all, let's go back a little bit further with you. How do you know this? How did you do what you did? I mean, everybody was manufacturing cars, yet all of a sudden you proliferate the greatest. What is it that you did? Well, it turns out that he actually had plenty of people to study in his day and age that were doing this really well. He actually took his team to the slaughterhouses of Chicago. I know, a little tough analogy here. I'll move on to one that you can probably stomach a little bit better. But he would watch how these folks um, put together all this meat packing and, you know, lifting these carcasses and making their cuts and moving it along the, the assembly line so they could deliver. And I know it's gruesome, but it's real. So don't duck your head in the sand. That's actually how this guy learned this process. And, and it was more about the people that were specialized that were on the assembly line. They didn't move. They were at a station and they did a particular part of the process. He also subsequently studied Sears and Roebuck and their systems. And what happened there, they had these incredible systems for managing the process of delivery themselves. So if you don't know much about Sears and Roebuck, do a quick study. You'll find that they had these major league depots out in the rural areas because a lot of the farmers couldn't get into the city to get the supplies they needed. So they went out and, and they built these depots and they could easily deliver it. And they built incredible systems. Now, knock, knock, knock on the, the present. Why don't you think about a couple major companies, including a guy named Bezos? Do you think he might have been studying these guys too? It sounds pretty familiar, doesn't it? So we have some pretty good company of past and present to say, all right, all right, I get it. Let's get them up in the office and let's try to figure out. But how do you manufacture anything in real estate? We're not builders. This isn't a podcast about building a property. No, but it is very, very much a podcast and a coaching program all about building relationships. See, the truth be told, we really don't sell houses. It's very difficult to sell a house to somebody that's not in a relationship with you or doesn't trust you to take them through the single largest financial transaction. And then, of course, there are, in fact, home inspectors who know the product better than most agents would ever care to know the product. So the product itself is a built product that needs to be studied in a different way. But what you need to do to even arrive there, what I need to do, we need to manufacture relationships. Now you think about that for a second. You say, well, well, wait a minute. Let's digest that. Why do we need to manufacture anything? I mean, I have all this referral business and I have friends and sphere of influence. These are all of those terms that our business proliferates as if that's enough to become a business. And it's not. It's not. I'm not saying that good referral programs that continue to bring people in that you don't know, that's different from, from what I'm talking about. You can't just rely on people you know. You have to manufacture new relationships constantly to make this what it became for Amazon, to make this what it became for, for um, Henry. It was a steady, predictable business. That's what it is. And that's what we do in manufacturing. So let's think about this for a second. Let's build this relationship manufacturing plant right now. When you imagine Henry, and at least this is what I did, getting raw materials into the yard where the assembly plant was. So you imagine all this steel coming in from his buddy Carnegie that was going to form part of the automobile and all his buddies, um, Firestone, uh, Harvey Firestone and all the rubber for the tires would come in and all these raw materials would come in. And you can imagine these big doors that it would be delivered through. And it started at one end of the assembly line and would spit out this shiny Model T. Sounds pretty good, right? And off it would go. So if you think about our business and the most important part of it being building relationships, this is where this whole concept of CRM, customer, I like contact better, contact relationship management. That's really what this assembly line is all about. 
So the only reason why we even talk about leads is because they are a, they're like a raw material in relationships. They are the contact information or it is the contact information of people who may or may not be interested in buying or selling real estate. But that comes in the front door of your manufacturing plant and it starts to morph into one of two things. Think about this the same way as the assembly line. They are either moving along the assembly line as part of the final product, which I'd like to think of as a happy client. My Model T is a happy client. It's not money. It's a happy client. I am trying to manufacture a relationship to its pinnacle where somebody is really happy with the process we just put them through, right? Think about that. Let that sink in for one second because now you look at leads differently. You look at them as trying to get the best raw materials you can, not the most. Can you imagine if Henry ran his business like most real estate agents who, who go get leads at, at, at no end, like a fire hose? Whoa, leads, leads. I got this lead generation company and everything's coming. I'm getting two, 300 leads a month. This is a great. No, it's not great because it doesn't consider is your assembly line set up to handle volume or not? Always start with a balance between quantity and quality. I like quality myself because I want a really, really good, happy client at the end. So build that relationship manufacturing plan to consider the raw materials go from lead or waste. They get kicked outside. They're in the waste pile. It's not going to happen. That relationship is not going to happen. Be realistic about it. Don't fret it. Don't get mad. Just move on. It's not going to make it. The next thing, prospect, that's where the relationship is starting to happen. You're beginning to be able to manufacture something deeper, something where they like you more, they trust you more, right before they become your client, and now you've built it correctly. So now you arrive at listing their property and subsequently showing their properties, and I'm going to whisper this one in your ear a couple times. They might be coming to you with no competition attached. You understand what I'm saying now? If you take the time to build this manufacturing plan for relationships and you invest in that final product, you arrive at that client stage, not in some dog fight because you're all trying to kill each other to get that appointment off that lead pile, but you've actually spent the time manufacturing a deeper relationship that means much more so that when they go through the, clo the closing module, that's being managed correctly and still staying with them and bringing them all the way to that past client module where now you have birthed a very happy past client who is likely to help you repeat if they have to or refer. Let that sink in. Thank you, Henry, right? So let's chunk this up here. I want to summarize this. There are a couple key points here. Number one, Napoleon Hill, the guy spends 20 years, go read his book, Law of Success, or use it as a reference book because it's so big, you might just look at it and choke. But read it and get the vibe that he really did study Henry very closely. It had a very big impact on that whole body of work. The next thing is understand that Henry himself studied the folks at um, the Chicago Slaughterhouses and Sears and Roebuck and all their systems. He was a student of process processes that yielded a good result and could be done consistently and predictably. Then take Henry like I did up into your glass office, looking down at your business and saying, what would Henry do with this mess right now? Or not so much. Maybe you're just in there and you're doing well and you need him to tweak it. But the best way to tweak it is to see it as a manufacturing plant for good, solid, positive relationships that yield a really happy past client, which will always be a great accelerant to your business. Okay? So the key point, be like Henry, understand and study the process systems of successful businesses. Remember, you can also take immediate action and get started in the right direction with our free video course over at freeagentgift.com. Hey, wink, wink. I have some things in order for you because Henry told me to do it, right? And if you like what you've learned here, then we'd appreciate it if you would subscribe and help us share these insights by giving us a positive review. If that's the way you feel, and if not, send me an email. Tell me I'm a bum and I'll take another look at what we talked about and I'll come at it from a different angle until you understand it, right? So whatever platform you're listening to, you can just give us some feedback. And if it's a positive review, we'd appreciate that so that other entrepreneurial real estate agents just like you, can find their way to here to join us and we can build a bigger community, okay? So thanks for listening. We look forward to helping you in the next episode. You've been listening to The Realty Classroom with Danny Griffin. 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 
Join us next time to continue learning how to build a smarter real estate agent business plan that helps you live a more fulfilled life.